So for this rock, it was inspired by a tumbler that I had recently made. This is called a unicorn burst in the tumbler community. And I just think they're beautiful. So I wanted to see if I could kind of recreate it for a rock. So here are the supplies I used to make this project. I used fluorescent pink by Liquitex, lemon yellow by Master's Touch, and primary blue by Liquitex. I also used titanium white by Liquitex as well. Now you can use one of the like Martha Stewart blenders to blend your colors. I did use a paintbrush for this. You'll also need um, a glitter. Now I'm showing you Opal Crush. That's what I originally had planned to use. I do switch it uh, to a glitter called Promise, which is a little finer glitter um, that I thought would work better. And I'll show you that later on in the video. So I took all of my paints, added water to them, mixed them up into a squirt bottle like these and use those to do my paintbrush. But like I said, you can use a dauber and the uh, blending method using a paint dauber. That would, it would work fine. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and use the airbrush. I thought it would just be a little bit easier. So I'm gonna fast forward through this section. But what I did was just kind of measure out how thick I wanted my stripes to be and I wanted two of each color and so I'm going to start with the pink and then do the two pink stripes and then I will go to the two yellow stripes and the two blue stripes I think that's the order I painted them in yeah it looks like it so if you are going to use an airbrush, and I've been fighting with my airbrush, I actually got a whole new setup. Um, my airbrush is old and I have was really struggling with it. But I wanted, for my particular rock, which is a mold from the Happy Dotting Company. She's got a new mold out and it's got several different shaped rocks. And I just think it's fantastic. I just love it. So this is one of the, the rocks from that mold. And again, I'm just painting my stripes on. And again, I'm going to do the yellow and then I'm going to do the blue. And you want to overlap your colors so that they blend. So that when the yellow and the orange is, or the yellow and the pink is going to make the orange and then the yellow and blue is going to make the green, and the pink and the blue is going to make the purple. Now you could go ahead with the paint dauber and paint all of the particular colors in the rainbow. I just, these three colors when they're blended together make a beautiful orange, green, and blue. So I'm again, I'm just going to fast forward through this section and we'll move on to the next section.
So now I'm taking my titanium white and I'm just going to airbrush around the around the side. And again, you can do this with a paint dauber. And what you're wanting to do is I want it to just blend up the side and kind of dull out the color along the edge. If you are using a paintbrush, this, I mean, a airbrush gun, it does take a couple of coats. Because I'm using the Liquitex, uh, Liquitex Titanium White, sorry. And uh, <clears throat> it kind of goes on a little translucent, so it takes a couple of coats when using the airbrush. So now that I have the rock painted, I'm going to put a, a, a coat of epoxy or resin, whatever you want to call it, on the top of the rock. So I'm using Stone Coat Epoxy, their Art Coat line. Uh, this line is heat resistant and it's also got a very good um, non-yellowing or UV resistant qualities to it. So. You could also use their quick coat. They have a quick coat which cures faster, but it doesn't have UV protectant, so you would definitely want to go back over it with an epoxy that does have a UV protectant in it. But as a base coat, you could use the quick coat. Now I put my resin in those uh, condiment squeeze bottles because I'm using such a small amount, mixing up such a small amount, the condiment squeeze bottles makes it so much easier to measure out because I'm only doing a fourth of a teaspoon for part B and then a fourth of a teaspoon for part A and that is the way I normally pour it. This is part B first because it's a thinner viscosity and then I put in part A which is a thicker viscosity and you have a better chance of getting it all mixed well when you put in the thinner liquid in first and then the thicker liquid in last. So now that I have my epoxy all mixed, I'm just going to pour a thin amount, a little amount on there because we just want a little coat, a, a thin coat of epoxy on the rock because we're going to use this to glue our glitter down. Now I didn't have to seal the paint onto the rock prior to doing the epoxy because I know that uh, my paint isn't going to lift. If you're using an airbrush paint or a like a student grade paint, some some of the less expensive lines of paint will lift with water. If it'll lift with water, the epoxy will make it lift as well. So you if you're using paints that you notice will lift with water easily after they've dried, then you're going to want to do like take some clear spray paint and seal in the paint first before applying the epoxy.
Now that I have the epoxy covering my rock, I'm just taking a heat gun to smooth out to smooth out the epoxy. Once you heat it up, it'll kind of self-level. So I'm just kind of speeding that process up by applying heat to it. So now I'm taking my glitter. And again, I originally thought I was going to use this Opal Crush, which is a little, um, it's a, a bigger chunk of glitter. And then I decided I was going to switch to this is a much finer glitter and it's by Glitter Grand or Glitter and Grand and I will link that below in the description and this is Promises. But any kind of glitter you want you just want to make sure that it's uh, a translucent glitter and I'm using kind of an opal shift glitter. And I've put down a piece of, I'm using butcher block paper <clears throat> to catch the glitter so that I don't waste a bunch of it. And you're just going to, I'm kind of heavy handed with the glitter sometimes, so it doesn't matter because we'll just knock off the stuff that doesn't stick and we'll just reuse that, put it back in the container. So you want to make sure that you do the top and the sides really well get good coverage and once we knock off this glitter you'll see that the the uh, design comes back there we go kind of hard to tip these rocks when you're holding them and they're wet with epoxy. I'm still just kind of trying to knock off as much glitter, make sure that I've got a good coverage and I don't have any bare spots. Now I'm going to pat the glitter down just to smooth it out a little bit if you don't do that step, you'll have to apply more coats of epoxy to get it to get the top of your rock smooth. So I do recommend kind of patting it down. You can also take wax paper or parchment paper and kind of go over the top of it too with that instead of your gloved gloved hand. So I'm just going to pour the rest of this glitter back into the container. And now I'm going to take my rock and I'm just going to continue. Sorry, I'm off screen. I'm just checking to make sure that I have good coverage on everything. And I'm just going to continue uh, pressing down that glitter. I do come back here in a second. There we go. Pressing down the glitter to try to get it as smooth. Oh, you want it to lay flat. So you just want to lay it down and that will help smooth the surface of your rock. You won't have to put nearly as many layers of epoxy on to get a, a smooth coat. And then I'm going to just let this cure overnight and come back in the morning for the next step. So now it's the next day and my resin is all cured and now I'm just going to take a sanding block and I'm just going to sand down any of the glitter that is sticking up. You do want to be careful because you don't want to sand through all the way through your epoxy to your paint. So I'm just kind of going over and knocking off any rough edges that I can feel. So now that I have my rock sanded, I wipe it down with a paper towel and then I spray it with alcohol 
just 100% alcohol. You could use 70%, 90%, whatever alcohol. I just happen to have 100%. But that'll remove any of the sanding dust and any oils from your hands as well. So you just want to wipe it down really good. I also cleaned up the bottom of my rock. I removed all of the resin drops off the bottom of my rock. I have a real easy method for doing that. And I'm going to post a separate video this week showing how I do that. And it doesn't require a bunch of sanding and stuff. It's just real easy. So now that I've removed all the resin from the rock, it does take off the paint, the base coat of paint that I have on the bottom. So I'm just going to repaint the bottom and clean it up. And just cover up. This is just where it peeled, peeled the paint off when I removed those resin drips. Like I said, I am going to post another video uh, this week showing how I do that. That's why I just skipped it in this video. And once I have my uh, bottom all cleaned up on my rock, I do spray the top of it with this Triple Thick by Rust-Oleum. And now we're moving on to adding the text, which I use the word dream. And I cut this out on my Cricut. I have, you can see the word dream on that white piece of uh, vinyl. That's all just done in white, and that's been offset from the text that I'm weeding out right now. So this text is going to have a white outline. So I'm just weeding off the vinyl that I don't need. And this, this font that I chose is so thin that you have to be really delicate pulling, pulling it away from the the vinyl you don't need it's kind of a pain and I'm using a color shifting um, vinyl and it shifts from pink to purple I don't know if that's going to translate well on video but it looks really pretty in person now I did after I went through all this trouble of putting this uh vinyl text on my rock. I wish I had hand painted it. Um, I think it would, it, I don't know, it, I thought it, it lost its kind of authenticity, I guess, for my rocks, because I hand paint everything. Um, so I think I would, I think I would have liked it better. I think it, it turned out beautiful, but it loses something by not having the hand painted word on there, even though by doing the printout and the vinyl, the text is perfect. Um, but I think I like the hand painted uh, text a little bit better. That's just a personal preference. Um, you can see how I struggled with getting the vinyl off. <laughs> weeding the vinyl off of this. It's so delicate, this text. There's like these little bitty pieces and uh, th this is kind of a nightmare. What I'm going to do is take the purple dream and I'm going to set it on top of the white dream to give that. So I'm going to stack the vinyl so that my dream has an outline and doesn't get lost on the rock. And that little blue thing is just something that 
will catch the vinyl because sometimes it's sticky and sometimes it's hard to get it off your weeding tools and you run it down those slits and it pulls it off of off your tool I don't know what they call those things it's something I got off of Amazon but I can't remember what it's called so now I'm taking my transfer tape and just gonna transfer the word to the transfer tape and then set it on top of the other uh, the white dream and this took it a little bit because my transfer tape isn't completely clear and so it was hard to see the white through my transfer tape. A clear transfer tape would be better. I just have a huge roll of this uh, this transfer tape, so I don't I don't want to waste it. But it did take me a minute to try to get it lined up correctly. So now that I have that all layered correctly, I'm going to go ahead and put it on my rock, which again has been sprayed with the triple thick uh, clear coat from my stoleum. Just try to get this on as straight as I can and centered as much as possible. And once you get it on there, just press it down really good and peel up the transfer tape. So here's what it looks like. I do add one more coat of resin to the top of this, but I wanted to see if I could show you, see how it, it's hard to see the color shift on the, on the screen. It looks so much better in person, but I do go ahead and resin this one more time. And then after it's resined, it's all ready to go, and I will show you what that looks like. So here is the finished rock. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.